Got another question for the synoptic questions playlist. So this one covers shapes and molecules, conjugate acid-base pairs, and organic mechanisms. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So the bond angle around these two atoms is dictated by the number of electron regions around the atom. So you can see we've got one, two, three electron regions. This double bond counts as one region. We've got no lone pairs, so these are all bonding regions. So that means we'll get equal repulsion. The angle for three bonding regions is 120 degrees, and the name of the shape, trigonal planar. Moving on to angle B, so around the oxygen, we've got one, two bonding regions, but remember oxygen's in group six, so there's also two lone pairs around there as well. So the angle is going to be, well, well the starting angle for four regions is 109.5, but we've got to knock off two times two and a half degrees, so five degrees in total gets knocked off. So the angle will go down to 104.5, and the shape is classed as non-linear. Moving on to part B, so the reaction between methane, sulfonic acid and H2O, well, the acid is going to donate its proton to the H2O, so the acid becomes that, the H2O becomes that. So I'm going to make the methane sulfonic acid the acid of pair 1, which means that this species here must be the base, the conjugate base of that pair. The H2O has accepted that H+, so it's acting as a base, so that's the other pair, so this is B2, which makes the H3O plus ion the acid of that pair, so that's A2. And for the other part of the question, whether the student's correct or not about the pH of the methane sulfonic acid being lower than the um, ethanoic acid, you'll notice I've worked out the Ka values, so I've just done 10 to the minus pKa, so we've got those. And what this is telling us is that the methane sulfonic acid is much more dissociated than the ethanoic acid. So if it's more dissociated, it's going to have a higher H plus concentration, and if it's got a higher H plus concentration, it's going to have a lower pH. And finally, part C, where we've got to come up with the curly arrows for this unfamiliar mechanism. So the way I tackle these, I look at the after the arrow box and think, well, what's changed going from that to what was before the arrow? So you can see we've got this OH bonded to the sulfur now. So curly arrows must have come from the OH minus, the lone pair on the OH minus, to that sulfur. And that backs up the fact that we're told the hydroxide ion acts as a nucleophile. It's donating a pair of electrons to the sulfur. What else has happened? The double bond has gone to a single bond, and this O has been left as an O minus. So a pair of electrons has gone up there like that. So moving on to step two now, so what's different again? Well, we've got the double bond back, so this pair of electrons has come down here to regenerate the double bond. What else has happened? This OCH3 is broken off, and the obviously the negative charge is left on the O, so the curly arrow has gone that way. And then finally, what's happened going from here to here? Well, this H has gone onto there, so how will that have happened? This pair of electrons will have gone that way to grab that hydrogen. And this is now an O minus. So pair of electrons, this bond's broken and the pair of electrons has gone 